This video is on account policies. User account policy outline things like rules for user passwords, like how long it should be and how often you should change it. Security admins with right access can configure user account policies on the system by simply going into system security page in the console. In Windows, this set of rules is specified using Active Directory users and computers. Let's go over some policies that you can change as security admins, starting with the password. For password, you can use NIST password guideline as a baseline. First, we have password complexity. Here you can set things like minimum alphabets, characters, and numbers required. You can even set things like prevent users from using sequential characters or repeated characters like 1234 or triple A. You can even prevent things like infamous waterfall password, where you go from top down, left, right across your keyboard. You can also set lockout here as well. Lockout account can define how many attempts you can have for incorrect password before being temporarily blocked. Then we have password history. This identifies how long a password should be kept. This is used to make sure you change your password frequently and don't reuse old passwords too often. Password reuse policy determines the number of unique new passwords that must be associated with the user account before an old password can be reused. This policy should also ensure you don't just change the single character in your password. Then we have network location policy. Network location policy objects enable you to specify a list of IP addresses. You can then configure authentication policies that only apply when users authenticate from IP addresses in the specified location. Features like file and printing sharing, network discovery, and others may be enabled or blocked depending on the network location allocated to your active network connection. You can also do this based on location by geofencing and geolocation. Geolocation can grant or deny access based on physical location of the user. You can even get more specific by using geofencing. Geofence is an invisible virtual fence you could draw, and this can trigger response from mobile devices each time geolocation compatible device enters or exits a geofence. There's also geotagging. You can use geotagging to find range of location specific information from their devices. By inputting coordinates into a proper image search engine, people can see images taken near a specific location. Geotagging is the process of appending geographic coordinates to media based on the location of a mobile device. Geotags can be applied to photos, videos, websites, text messages, QR codes, and so forth. These technologies can also help with risky logins, or so-called impossible travel time. This policy calculates stuff like time between multiple login locations and identify if that travel was even possible. This algorithm provides admins with risk score signal to decide whether or not to enforce certain administrative regulations. Then we have time-based logins. This is simply specifying a time, like setting opening hour for your business. Period-based authentication is standard method for granting access to an area by recognizing a person at an entrance and opening a barrier at predetermined time. You can also set account disablement policy, which specifies what happens to your account when employee leaves permanently or for a certain amount of time. You can also set rules on who has access to certain resources using access policies, and also set account permissions to give them power to read and write to the file. All these policies has to be audited to ensure people are actually following the policies, otherwise people are not gonna follow them. Security audit is a comprehensive assessment to measure your security against checklist. Whether it's a checklist of industry best practices, externally established standards, or federal regulations.